Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this video, I'm going to discuss about a very important question that has been asked by many of my subscribers and the people who are preparing for data science and who are planning to make a successful career transition into the analytics industry. And the question is very much simple. Uh, let's take an instance of one of our subscriber who had asked this question was that, uh, suppose he's working in some other domain, right? And definitely to uh, get into the data science industry, you know, obviously you need to show something, you know, that you have actually done in the current company that you are probably working in. Or even though you're a student, you have probably developed a kind of application that is related to something specific related to data science itself. So the main question is that how, what all things they should really need to consider while preparing a machine learning project or a deep learning project. So whenever I say machine learning project, I'm also going to consider deep learning within them as you know that deep learning is a subset of machine learning. So a kind of question was something like what should be the checklist where while we are definitely designing a machine learning project or whether we are implementing a machine learning project, even though I'm working in some other domain. Tomorrow, if I really want to showcase the skills that I have learned to my manager, how should I start ahead with? You know, and this is very much simple. I've seen some of my subscribers, what they have actually done is that they're working in some other domain like sales and marketing. They were in that specific domain after acquiring the data science skill sets. You know, they tried to automate some of the tasks, you know, and they created the entire application. They showcased to the manager and the manager liked it. And now it is being used in that specific industry. Apart from that, suppose uh, you're trying to develop a task which can definitely, uh, you know, reduce the amount or expenditure that is required in that specific process. That would also be a very good idea. So guys, let's go ahead and try it. I'll share my screen in front of you and uh, we'll discuss about some of the very important checklists that you should always keep in mind uh, while preparing a machine learning project. And probably if this checklist is there whenever you're implementing any kind of projects, it will be very easy for you to explain the interviewer in a better way. And that is what actually the interviewer looks at, you know. So let's go ahead and let's, uh, I'm just sharing my screen over here. So uh, here is the thing, a machine learning project checklist. Okay, so this checklist, always remember what all steps, definitely. Suppose if I am planning, I'm working in a marketing domain and uh, I have now acquired data science skills. Now, what all things I will definitely keep in mind while designing the problem statement. First of all, I'll definitely frame the problem and always focus on the goal. And the goal focus that should be there is definitely, it should be with respect to some kind of figures, you know. If I am uh, in marketing, I'll definitely say, I really want to increase the revenue. Let's say this is one of the tasks. Or I want to automate one process automate one process which can reduce the expenditure, right? It can reduce the expenditure by 5%, 1%, 2% or it can increase the revenue by 3%. Suppose you're working in the retail domain, you're working in the logistic domain, okay? So logistic domain, my efficiency should be that, let's say I want to procure some raw materials for the upcoming six months. So that efficiency, I really want to show, show in this domain also. And one kind of project I've also done in that specific way for one of my client, right? So all these things are definitely there and should be in your mindset to definitely keep a problem statement in mind and always focus on the goal, okay? So very important step with respect to the first one. Then obviously the data set. Because whenever you go for the interviews, whenever, once you talk about the project, the next thing is that they would definitely be curious to know about the data, right? Where did you get the data set from, right? And even though you are from other background, you definitely will be working with huge amount of data, probably in the Excel sheets for creating presentation and many more things. So here you have APIs, internal database, third party APIs. This may be some kind of paid, paid APIs itself. That's fine. So all these things, when you are able to say, definitely they'll get an idea. Okay. You have also done some kind of exploration to basically find out the data set that would definitely be used in actually creating an entire machine learning project. Coming to the next step that is exploring the data to gain insights. These are mostly involved with the entire life cycle of a data science project. 
But here, exploring the data to gain insights is mainly for two purpose. And over here, a data analyst can also work. A data scientist can also work. But at the end of the day, we are giving the stakeholders that much insights that they can actually make the decision making process. It will definitely help in the decision making process. Now, if you are also able to explain these things in your project, trust me, it looks like a real world project itself. And it looks very good with respect to your domain. Because tomorrow, if you are going to attend for an interview, already you are a master in that domain. And now you have that entire data science skill sets to create some amazing projects from your side, right? Then the very important step, preparing the data to be trained by ML algorithms for trained for ML algorithms. Right? So this will be for ML algorithms because all the data that we will be getting probably that may not be clean. We have to really clean the data, do feature engineering, feature selection, finally keep it ready so that it can be ingested by ML algorithms or deep learning algorithms in short, right? So over here, feature engineering, that step, that process. And for an interviewer, you should definitely talk about the challenges that you have faced over here. Challenges are quite important over here. What all challenges that you probably faced while cleaning the data? Because there may be instances in the first instance, you may not understand what that data is all about. Because getting the data from the APIs also uh, will not be that good quality unless and until it is from some kind of paid APIs. If there is some data, uh, data that is available within the company result, it may be a good quality data, but there are a lot of chances that you may not be getting a good quality data. At each and every step, you should definitely talk about the challenges and this thing, when you are also creating your machine learning project, I have kept this as in a checklist because that should always be as a reminder in your mind. Okay. Now coming to the next step, always explore all different models and select the best one. This is the most important thing, guys. Don't just directly select or say that I've just directly used random forest. No, an interviewer will definitely like to see that what all things you have actually tried, right? And probably they may also ask you, which is your favorite algorithm? And did you implement that entire machine learning project with that algorithm? No, you should try all the available algorithms that are available over there. And whichever gives you the best performance that should be taken care of. And with the help of that only your model should be selected. In the later stages, when the data set is getting changed, obviously your model will also get changed. So just don't be dependent on one model. Explore all the different models and select the best one. And this entire thing, you will be getting an idea from AutoML, right? If you have heard about AutoML, in AutoML, which is an automated machine learning library, this also tries different, different algorithm. Or you can also take example of PyCaret, right? These are some kind of AutoML libraries. And in this, all, all the automated libraries, you know, machine learning libraries, they try to use all the different algorithms that are available. And then based on that, they select the best one. Then coming to the next step, that is fine tuning your models. And this is definitely required to make your model better and scalable. So that after a couple of months also, uh, you should be able to use it to produce some good result. And when I say fine tuning your models here, you will probably be achieving your goals, right? Here, your result will be initially, this was your observation result. This was your target result. Here was your real result, like what you are able to achieve. So that specific thing should also be told to an interviewer in the interview place. Our target was probably 3%. I probably, I wanted to increase the revenue by 3%, but after applying all these techniques, I was able to do 5%. It can also reduce. It can also be done to 1%. And then you can also talk about more points. What are your future plans that you are probably taking or uh, what you, you, you're planning so that you can increase the revenue by some percentage, right? So that is also there. Then finally, deploying, launching and monitoring and maintaining your system. So this should also be a plan in your machine learning project checklist. Deploying with respect to some specific cloud, launching, monitoring, how you are going to monitor it. You know, there are various ways uh, to do it in AWS cloud or GCP. And finally, you're maintaining your system. So when you cover all these points, when you cover all this checklist, your machine learning projects looks like a complete, complete project in short. Nothing is missing in all these things, guys, right? 
So this checklist will actually help you to clear the interview successfully. And this is the technique we have applied with our students also guys. In each and every step, we have helped them out. And right now, the amount of transitions probably has happened in iNeuron from students. You can check out the Hall of Fame from iNeuron itself. There now we have started putting all the data, right? And we are taking the people consent and then we are putting the data over there. We are putting the story of the entire transition over there. So this checklist is pretty much important. This checklist should always be kept in mind. And if you have this in mind, you will be able to explain the interviewer in a better way. Uh, and definitely you'll be able to crack the jobs. Not on the first instance, probably in the second interview, third interview, definitely you will be able to get an idea. So I hope you liked this video. Uh, this was it from my side. Yes, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Thank you, one doll. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Share with all your friends because these things are very important. Later on, once you crack the jobs, you will be know, getting to know all the process. You will be able to work with the team and then you will be able to develop some amazing applications too. So yes, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you and all. Bye-bye.